In an unexpected turn of events, former Transport Minister S. Iswaran, who was initially facing corruption charges involving gifts totaling over 400,000 Singapore dollars, had his charges reduced to lesser offences under Section 165 of the Penal Code. The Attorney General's Chambers, AGC, cited significant evidentiary challenges as the reason for amending the charges. Iswaran had been accused of receiving gifts from property tycoon Ong Bengseng and businessman Lum Kokseng, including luxury flights, Formula One tickets, whiskey bottles, and a Brompton bicycle, during his time as transport minister. The AGC initially charged Iswaran under the Prevention of Corruption Act, PCA, a move that garnered significant attention, as it would have marked a historic trial involving a political office holder. However, just before the trial, the AGC opted to downgrade the charges, explaining that proving corrupt intent beyond a reasonable doubt was challenging. Both Iswaran and Ong, the primary parties involved, would have had to implicate themselves to establish corruption, which posed a major litigation risk for the prosecution. This sudden amendment has led to Iswaran pleading guilty to lesser charges under Section 165 of the Penal Code, which deals with public servants receiving gifts without corrupt intent. He also faces a charge of obstruction of justice for attempting to mitigate further investigation into one of the trips. Iswaran is now set to face sentencing on 3 October, 2024, with the prosecution seeking a sentence of six to seven months, while the defense argues for a term of eight weeks. The AGC's decision to reduce the charges has raised questions about why corruption charges were pressed in the first place, knowing the evidentiary challenges that existed. This situation draws parallels to the Keppel Offshore and Marine Bribery case, where senior executives were issued stern warnings after a five-year investigation due to similar difficulties in proving corruption in court. What does this mean for Singapore's reputation as a nation with zero tolerance for corruption? Does this decision undermine public trust, or is it a pragmatic move by the AGC to avoid a lengthy and costly trial with uncertain outcomes? Former Transport Minister Iswaran will now face a much lesser sentence than initially expected. However, the AGC has indicated that a decision regarding the prosecution of businessman Ong Bung Seng will be made soon. Iswaran's case continues to draw widespread attention, particularly around the AGC's prosecutorial discretion and whether this approach signals inconsistency in how different cases are handled. We want to hear your thoughts. Do you believe that the AGC made the right decision in reducing the charges against Iswaran, or do you think the original corruption charges should have gone to trial? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to 2230 for more detailed and factual news coverage. Thinking question. Do you think reducing the charges in high-profile cases like this creates a perception of unequal treatment under the law?